go. Hi, welcome to Captain Steve's How To Boating. And what we're doing is we're in the engine room right now and we're gonna go over some engine room basics for you. Now I'm gonna be talking about diesel engines, not about gas engines here. We're gonna be talking about diesels. There's a few differences to them, especially when it comes to checking the oil. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now that's important on a diesel engine. On a car engine or a regular gasoline engine, you wanna keep your oil level right to the top, right to that line. That's where they always want you to have it. On diesel engines, it's different. You don't want it on the top line. You want it about halfway between the bottom line and the top line, and each diesel engine is different. For example, I'm on a Cummins engine right now, so I'm gonna check the oil. I'm gonna bring out the dipstick, now you always do this when the engine is cool. In the morning before you take off or in the afternoon before you leave the dock, you wanna check your oil. I'm gonna put the dipstick back in and when I pull it out, I'm gonna to look to see where the oil is. And right now it's just above halfway, maybe three quarters of the way to full. And that's the perfect level you want it at. You don't want it down close to the bottom line and you definitely don't want it at or above the full line. That's gonna mess up your diesel engine over time. So when you check your oil, always keep it about halfway between the bottom and the top line. These are called fuel filters and on a diesel engine hopefully if you've got fairly big engines you have two of these filters. Now these are very popular model. There's several different models out there but these are a very popular model and as you can see it actually has a handle between the two of them and that way you can switch from one to the other. You can switch to both or you can turn, turn them totally off. You want to, to turn them totally off when you're ready to change the filters themselves on both sides. But the advantage to having two is that you can put it on one side and while you're going, if one of them goes bad, in other words, the fuel has a problem and it gets clogged up, you can switch it over to the other one while the engines are going and you're not gonna miss a beat. So that's why this is important. But what I see all the time, and I never get it, is that people will put it for both filters at the same time. I'm making an assumption that they think it's double filtering the fuel, but you know what? The fuel only gets filtered one time. The hoses are only one side and you can't filter too much. So always only put it on one side and occasionally come down, like maybe every now and then when you come down to check your engines, change it over to the other side so you're alternating between the two so the fuel doesn't get old in one side. Now we're gonna go over changing the filter in just a moment, but this is really important. One side or the other but never both that's one of the most overlooked things in an engine room and in a bilge area and that's a sump pump a sump pump is used when uh, you take a shower it comes from your 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 sink it also comes from your air conditioning and it's where the water goes before it's pumped overboard and I'm gonna show you one right now this is a sump pump this is this is a pretty nice one in a 52 foot sea ray and as you can see it's just kind of a big box and I know I'm moving around a lot here but it comes like in a kind of a big box and it has a cover you can open up and what happens is is uh, the reason for a sump pump is that the environmentalists didn't like seeing all those soap suds floating around. So what happens is your soap suds and your water come from everything from your washer to your sink to your shower and it all comes into this and it fills up and then it pumps it out. Well the reason it pumps it out is it pumps it out below the suds. So the only thing that people see on the water are, is the water and not the suds. The suds then dissipate and, and everything else. But what happens in these boxes is they get really dirty and they need to be cleaned every now and then you can even see here you see a scum line around the edge and I've seen them a lot worse because a lot of people when they're washing their dishes and stuff oh my goodness I don't even want to think about what they put down the sink so you want to make sure that every now and then you come down and clean out your sumps if you don't what happens is first of all it gets all clogged up but also it's going to uh, burn out your pump motor uh, which is the same as the bilge pump that you have down your bilges so that's it for this time Hi, now we're going to talk about strainers, and strainers are really the most important piece of equipment in your engine room, if you can believe that. The reason is, is because this is what protects your engine, your generator, and your air conditioning system. You have through holes that come from the bottom of the boat, and especially in salt water, salt water is circulating through all of your stuff inside your engine room. So you want to make sure your strainers are clean, because as soon as they get clogged up, your engines overheat, your air conditioner overheats, and your generator overheats and they shut down. And that's not a good thing. So you want to be sure to check your strainers often. Now your air conditioning strainer is the most important as far as checking because what happens is 
that's a strainer that gets the dirtiest the quickest I see it all the time air conditioning systems run 24 by 7 they shut off a little bit here and there but they're always running especially in salt water especially in warm salt water of South Florida you get a lot of growth in there and what happens is the water comes up it sits in there and it starts growing and once it starts growing it starts clogging it and what I've had to do many times is open that up take the strainer basket out with a pair of pliers and wash it down and soak it in muriatic acid in order to try and keep it clean and then what you have is the strainer itself which is glass or plastic it's all growth on the inside you gotta take the whole thing apart and keep it clean so you want to make sure that your strainers are checked all the time now I'm sitting at the back of a 52 foot 2007 Sea Ray Sundancer and what I've got here is I've got strainers I'm not gonna go to the air conditioning strainers because it's too hard to get to for a video but what I have here is I have an engine strainer and I have a generator strainer and the generator strainer is the exact same size as the air conditioning strainer now you see the tops on here um, have three little areas that have little areas in them that, to undo them. Now what I see all the time which drives me absolutely crazy is these have rubber seals in them. They only need to be hand tightened to be able to close off those rubber seals. But people use tools on these and they torque them down to where I've had to take and put a tool in them and take a hammer to get them down. Now if you can imagine one of these strainers clogs up and you're out in the middle of the ocean and you're down here with a hammer trying to get it open. Now always keep a tool available in your engine room and down here is where we keep it here. This is the type of tool that you use on these types of things. It's got a little Y to it. You can buy them at any marine store and you should always have one on board. And what you do is you take and you put it inside of these holes and then you turn it and it opens it. It loosens it up. Now when you're ready to check your strainers, what's important is you've got to turn the through hole off. And right down here is a through hole uh, connector. Also, what's really important is that when you, you come down every now and then, and then you turn and you exercise these for everything, for the engines, for the air conditioning, for the generator. Turn them on, turn them off. Because if, you, if they're not loose, when you need to turn them off and you can't turn them off, you're in a bunch of trouble. You've got to be able to turn them on and off. So every now and then you've got to come down and do all that. So back up here, when you take and, and you want to check them, again, you're going to take and turn this off. I'm going to do that real quick, I think. Okay, that's turned off. And what you do is you come back up here, if I can get my leg out of the way, take your tool, but preferably be able to do it with your hand, and loosen that up. This unscrews. And you pull out your strainer and you check it. And this is very nice and clean. Now, I'm going to show you a secret to this, which is very, very cool. I'm going to put this back on here. And again, when I put it on, I'm going to hand tighten this down. I'm going to torque it down a little bit, but I'm only going to do it with my hands, no tools. Now, here's what's really cool. You can take a flashlight, turn on your flashlight, and you can take it down behind the strainer and poke it through the strainer. Now what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to see the light coming through the strainer, not just shining it in the strainer, but coming through the opposite side. If you can see it through the opposite side, you know that your strainer is clean and you don't have to open it up. If you can't see it, get that strainer open and clean it. So that's it about strainers. Keep them clean all the time. I'll see you at the helm.